that's when they view this on the live stream, you know that? Yes. So, <laughs> and uh, so we're not taking it for granted. So the, we welcome you, those that are viewing via live stream. Um, we thank you for um, tuning in to being with us um, today. I'm talking about maintaining stable relationships. Now, we've been talking about insights. The God says insights into what he has. Talk about restoration, recovery. So when I talk about relation, relationship, I'm not just talking of uh, the uh, uh, um, marital relationship or relationships of love or whatever. I'm talking about every relationship. The, 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 the life of every creation of God is one of relationship. How many of you know that? Do you know that? God says, let us. Now, first of all, says, let us. God the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. Relationship. Let us make man in our image. And after making man, great. He said, but it's not good for man to be alone. What is that again? Relationship. Somebody hear me? So now, in these deals of God, in these things that we are talking about, no one is not supposed, you cannot do anything by yourself. Hmm? We need one another. Now, where I'm getting to is that it comes strong in my spirit over the past so many days. We've talked about love is good. We're going to read 1 Corinthians 13, open unto it. Certain qualities of love. Because that's the basis of relationship. The Lord says, that shall not kill, that shall not. That's good. But love one another is the fulfillment of the law. Because when you love, you can't kill. Mm -hmm. Somebody hear me? So, so now, so when we talk about love, I'm not, it's, I, so I'm not just giving you steps. Or I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring the practicality of why, how we can maintain relationships. People like this, I don't like you, cut off. I don't like you, cut off. I don't, you know, those kind of, so there's, there's no consistency in dealing with people. Everything that God is saying, breakthroughs, big this, insights, it will connect you with somebody, isn't it? How do you work with the connection if you don't know how to maintain relationships? Because it's not only it's not always going to be rosy, rosy. Are you getting it? How, some of those women, people might not even locate it. Like I said, somebody says sometimes, I, 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 I will not have anything to do with any Filipino because one person from Philippines hurt him. Is that the way it's supposed to be? But people do that. So, so you hate everybody from a particular race because somebody from that race did something wrong to you. Or you hurt some things. Some of us, it's even, it's even worse. Not even something directly to them, done to them, but something they heard from other people. Or some of them fears from the past. Some, I hate men because of what men did to me. Or I hate women because of what women did to me. Now, God is talking about maintaining healthy relationships. In order to be able to tap into the things that he has said for us. He says, for eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It does not enter the heart of man. The things that God has prepared. The hidden secret riches. So, there are things that will take us to people. Are you getting it? He said, the riches of the Gentiles are laid up for who? For you and I. So, there are certain connectivity. Certain connections. That will be in place, but somehow if we are not careful, because of preformed information or experience, one can miss it. But I decree you will not miss it today. Amen. In Jesus' name, you will not miss it ever. Amen. But we get to be cautious. But you see, but the thing is, this was supposed to be sharing. We don't even need to share it. If we're a Christian who is really living like according to the Word of God. And the fear of God will walk in the direction that he will not miss this. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? <laughs> oh, you know. Forget the past. Love bears all things. Mm -hmm. You know. You get what I'm trying to say? You know. But God is bringing it down because sometimes we leave these things out. We can spiritualize, in quote. You, I thought you can't be in the spirit. And if you say if you if you you can't say if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But when some of us act the spirit, not living it, 
and we are fulfilling the laws of the flesh in the acting in the spirit. You can't be fasting and praying in tongues so strong and you are hurting somebody because you are spiritual. Hello. Are you going to try to say So your spiritual cloak covers it. You know, you are really anointed. <laughs> yeah. so, so you don't care about what's happening to anybody around you. You're anointed. You're marching over. You're doing it. No, no, that's not God. That's flesh. It's flesh. flesh. See, it's a total package. It's a total package. I can sit here and be preaching this. Like I said before, your mind goes, that must be for Mary. No, that's flesh still. I hear what <laughs> The Lord is speaking to you as an individual, to me, or speaking to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes, yes, back again. I know this particular lady on the job was very, we could see, she loves God, all right. But you can be, instead of being passionate, you can become fanatic. So you see, when you she, she, she meant well, but not by revelation, not according to the word. So you can't be spiritual without the word. So how is the Lord leading you? Through the word. What is the check on the balance? Oh, and you come by somebody who smokes, maybe on the job, maybe smoking on the break, pass by somebody, you're good to hell, you're good to hell, you're good to hell. And they're going to hell, it's not that she's smiling to say it, she really means it. She's angry in her face, and she's saying, you're going to hell. You will go to hell. You will go, you know. <laughs> and she walk by. A very pretty lady. If you see her, she had her children, a big, big, baby. You would think she was 25 when she was almost 50. God and blessed her. But when she opens the fire of, I don't know whether it's preaching, I'm going to call it now, I don't know. Oh, my God. She was terrorizing people. <laughs> But that's not the way it's supposed to be. She wasn't enjoying You could see she wasn't enjoying it. So some of those actions, because the revelation of the world is not there, can be coming from a pain, even in a personal life. You're using heat in everybody. So I'm thinking, how could, you, how could you be a Christian? Now, God, could anybody that you run around, your coming contact could be an avenue God wants to use to bless you. I mean, we don't do good to because we want to be blessed. I hear what I'm saying? By them. But what I'm saying again, you do not know. Like the scripture says you can't say cast your, you don't know which one works for you. Now, in Hebrews 13, I think that was, which word? Uh, Hebrews, is it Hebrews 13? Let me see if I can lay hold of that here somewhere. It's Hebrews 13, I think. says, entertain strangers. What, do you know where that is? Um, let me see. 13 what? Yeah, 13 too, thank you. He said, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels on our ways. Are you hearing me? Now you can see that. Abraham entertained strangers. How many of you remember? They eventually were angels from God. <laughs> that God used to bless him. And angels vouch for him. I know that this man, he will, he will take, follow his children, lead them in the way of the Lord. Remember the testimony? Yeah. So we will not hide anything from him. They vouch for him. So which means there is nobody that is small. Nobody that is big. Everyone you meet because they represent God. In the image of God. God says if you don't treat the one you see nice. How will you retreat me that you don't see? The one you love, you see, you don't love. How will you love God that you don't see? Relationships. Somebody hear what I'm saying? It's important. 
how do we do it on a practical basis at times? Because sometimes, you know, it's easy to brush off people. I'm not talking about even those you see might be in your house or next door, which is important. But somebody might even meet in a store. What makes you think you will not meet them again somewhere soon? Sometimes some people's actions have laid foundations wrong even for their loved ones. You know that? Children and different things. Yes. Ah, that's that, that man's son. That one. Oh, oh, please, oh, don't get near him. <laughs> yeah. You know the same way they look at you. They, they can look at you. That's why sometimes some people go to certain schools and they, they ask them questions. Do you have any sibling or your parent who went to any of these schools? They say yes. That that brings you closer to being taken. <laughs> Because they say, how do they, what, what do they say again that uh, an apple will not fall from uh, far from a tree? So the, you are best of the same feather, they what? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're, where you come from or your association will determine your kind of person. So now, so what, what, what legacy are we leaving? Inconsistency? or wildfire <laughs> or the fruits of the spirit that you become the resume for your loved ones oh shataka <laughs> oh, no, I know I trust that person I know how they are although people look at their standard too so I mean, let me see do they have money ok no don't, don't go there <laughs> some are not looking at the character like money can perish in one day like some people are looking for a wife or husband so let's just see what do they have are they big? What if the person they are bringing to your person is sick? Somebody who is not uh, organized. Maybe it's crazy or something. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I has money. And the next uh, uh, two years, you hear that uh, something has happened to your son or your daughter. God forbid. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting it? So it's not just what they, what they have or don't have on the external. It's the, it's the fruit of the spirit. The character. That's the last thing. That's what you check. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let's read First Corinthians 13 like we. Tell somebody relationships. Mm. You say, men, let them say maintaining healthy, consistent. When you say healthy, it doesn't have to be best of friends. Which is saying anybody you meet is don't leave people in a wrong. Don't. Which is keep something healthy. Don't look at just the immediate. <laughs> it's just a housekeeper in the place. Forget it. <laughs> really, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Now the housekeeper will turn out to be somebody you need sometime for something great tomorrow. Or could be connected to somebody who will be relevant to what concerns you tomorrow. So the Lord says, I'm going to say, he said, you see, you're talking about these insights, great things coming. He said, tell them about relationships. I don't know why it could be one person, it could be somebody viewing via live stream, any one of us. Which means some people are using their own hands to block things that is opening for them. Yeah. <laughs> And you might not know it because you might be okay because you might be comfortable. If you, if for example you are doing well, everything is doing fine. You might not know how you are blocking it with somebody that you're just doing things are not right. See, somebody catching me? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know they say networking. If you network by the Spirit, it is lasting. Hmm. It is say say now. First Corinthians chapter four, chapter thirteen. I mean, uh, let, let me read it from both. Somebody open to me. We want me to amplify it if you can find it there. While I'm reading this, um, the amplify classic. There's the AMPC. If you find it there, but well, let me read this. It says, chapter four, chapter thirteen, verse four. Charity suffered long. And it's kind. Charity envied, not charity vaunted, not itself. It's not puffed up. Now, everything about love is towards somebody else, isn't it? That's relationship. So it's not just something you, somebody says, well, I don't have, I, 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 
you have conflict with God. I don't want to see anybody anymore. Okay, so when you lock yourself in your house, you are, you, how do you know you are making imp improvement or you are growing up? <laughs> Who is going to upset you your bed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your pillow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody. Or the tap. No, nothing else. Go to your kitchen. The fridge might upset you when there is no food inside. <laughs> After I say a number of this, you've not gone out. But there's nothing. There's a relationship. This thing God is telling us, it's not because He's trying us to so that we'll fail. It's helping us to maintain it. Because when we maintain it, we enjoy things better. It's not good for man to be alone, so it's good to be associated. It is beneficial. Check the Tower of Babel, where they were going in agreement. Things were working well, isn't it? And so when you are smooth, things are working well. The spirit of unity and transparency will bring breakthroughs. So there's nothing wrong with that. So don't go and hide in your house and say, well, I don't want to see nobody anymore. <laughs> so when I, when I get to work, I'm not going to talk to nobody. I just stay by myself. There's no way you're going to do that. You can't. How are you going to do it? Even if you are self-employed, you, you're employed means to do something in relation with other people, not to other people. So you're not going to do it by yourself. Somebody has to pay you for what you supply. The one you're supplying it to is a human being. The person might not be nice to you one day. Maybe you're going through some things. <clears throat> okay, I don't, I don't, okay, I'm coming. And you get... <clears throat> the day, when you do <clears throat> like that, the next day you won't get a contract. Isn't it? But when you, when you suffer long and you're patient, you might be able to wait through that time where that person is going through whatever they're going through. You might even be used to minister back to the person. When we make excuses, it's not because we're making excuses because you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to say things. Like, no, no, no. Sometimes let God give you the grace to even make excuses for people so you are not there to bring them down immediately they make a mistake. You're there to help. Is somebody hearing me? So I don't quick, so that's, you hear, see what we're reading. So I don't quickly believe that it's finished. That's why it says, be exalted. Now let's go, let's go on. It says, verse 5, Doth not behave yourself unseemingly. So you, you carry yourself properly. Seek it not her own. It's not selfish. It's not easily provoked. Think it no evil. So I'm not going to be thinking about the other person wrong. Even if wrong is there. It didn't say there is no evil. It said, but does not think it. So I don't let it stay. Are you getting me? So it's not like, I understand scripture. Think I know evil because there are likely to be evil coming from the people, but I don't dwell on it. Now, it says, Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. You know, sometimes people, people look at other people's faults, helps them to feel good about themselves. I am saying it again, I say it all over again, and every day, somebody's bad doesn't make you more spiritual. You and you are the man. You and God and God's word. <laughs> Check where you are. Work out your own salvation, not in a line, line <laughs> in league with somebody else. With fear and what? Trembling. So the fact that everybody writes an exam in a class, let's say spiritual exam, and we're all supposed to get 100%, isn't it? God is building His church, perfect church. We're working towards that perfection, and we become like Him when we see Him, what? Face to face. So if everybody gets, if I get. 70, and every other person gets 56. That doesn't mean I did well. But somehow the world says it's well. Alright? So we rejoice in iniquity. Instead of rejoicing in truth. But that's not our portion in Jesus' name. He says, verse 7, Bears all. Everybody say, bear. bear. Everybody say, all. all. Mm -hmm. Things. <laughs> Bears all things. Believes all things. So, he's not saying you're believing evil, which means I believe you, even if you're showing something else. You hear me? So you're able to stay patient. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, so even when you are not getting all you need to get, you are not foolish, because that's the opposing part. Is even if they take you that way, you are not. You are walking according to God's word. Your reward is plenty. It says, I know we've talked about first and a number of times, but I'm talking, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being very specific about relationships. 
hopes all things. So he's expecting a change. I don't give up on people. That conference we went to the West, that man was emphasizing. He said, he said, don't give up. Believe in people. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on other people. He emphasized, actually, he said, don't give up on the ministers. People place ministers on too high pedestal. Yeah. Like I said before, somebody can come around now, coming out from uh, some some pain or something that's happening to him. On, if he hears one, maybe the minister had a headache. Why, why, why? He said, Pastor, how can you have a headache? <laughs> you know, you get, when that time should be time, you pray for the pastor or for the person or the other party. Somebody hear me? So we don't give up on ourselves. We don't give up on people. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. He endures all things. Praise God. Does somebody have the. Let me read my translation now since nobody has it. Okay, good. Hallelujah. Get into this. It's just so important. I'll give you instances in the Bible where you see people. The page. I'm just reading this from background so we get into what we're getting to. First uh, Corinthians 13. Let me get to. Okay. It's a love that endures long, and is patient and kind. Love is never envious or boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. When we think people look down on us because we don't have certain things, we are being envious and jealous of what the people have. You think they have. If somebody, if you feel somebody ill-treated you because you didn't go to enough school, which means maybe the Lord has been telling you to go to school, you're refusing it, you're putting it on somebody else. So you feel because they went to school, you didn't go enough, then it's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there's a place of covetousness or com- evil competition underlying it. So you're lashing out based on that. Why will you think of it that way? So it's not them. You have felt that you are not sufficient without the school. If you knew you were complete without the school, you're not afraid of how you have been treated. That's why the Lord says in Hebrews 13, 5, do not be covetous or vainglory. So we have an attitude that will never leave you nor forsake you. So you're not afraid of what man can do unto you. You say, the Lord is my help. I'm not afraid of what man can do unto me. So I'm not afraid of the other person. Say, so don't be envious of people's prosperity. Mm-hmm. You hear me? See that in the Psalms. Why? Because I know God is my promotion. Amen. The world might compare you with other people. Just relax and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. Every step. What's wealth if you are not even there to enjoy it? God is my glory and the lift of my head. He's my sustainer. I'm alive because of him. I know it. There's so many ways the devil has attempted through accident, different things to tarnish my life years back up to now. But he has failed. He has used it, he still uses to destroy my destiny, to stagnate, to stop. But he can never succeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you get to know that, all right? Now it says, it, is, it says, verse 5, it is not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. It is not rude or mannerly and does not act on becoming it. Love, God's love in us does not as, insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fresh or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, pays no attention to a suffered wrong, it does not live in it. He does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right or truth prevail, and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Everything, anything and everything. is ever ready to believe the best of every person. So when you know that, that's why sometimes, even if something touches me, I could walk into the office. Now, when you know these things, it's easy for the Holy Spirit to touch you. Either I speak to you directly or you could tell somebody else. But when you don't, somebody could tell you, that's when you boil over more. <laughs> you want to go do what you want to do. <laughs> but when you know these things, the slightest intervention, you will just check yourself. Yeah. 
you could know someone. By this way, it's not because it doesn't come initially for you to act the contrary. I could walk into the office, come back. They know me here. I could walk in, come back five minutes later. It's completely different. <laughs> or what I started with, walking with the Holy Ghost. That's the thing. Your heart has to be flexible for the Lord to walk with. All this is coming, it might not be immediately. What is not immediately, the Holy Spirit is available to bring it in. He will teach us all things. He will remind us. That's why I say remind. So remind means there's possibility to, it's possible to forget. Because of the prevailing circumstances. But are you ready? Or are you stuck on how you want it? <laughs> so we see it done. That's when it says, that's why it says, Believe the best. If you believe the best of people, the room will be there for you to begin. That's why I said, go back. You think on the good things. Despite what is happening, then it will help you to, to know what to do. Praise God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His hopes are faithless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. Somebody hear me? It endures everything. Everything without weakening. His hopes are faithless. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, now read, let's go to Romans chapter 12. I have to give you some examples, but let me just uh, pray for God. Over me. I know I'm saying this. Somebody has to receive it and just get. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking about practical living for Christians. Now, I'm talking about maintaining healthy. Healthy does not mean, like I said before, that everybody we meet, we have to be best of friends or we have to see them every day. No, it means everywhere you meet, everywhere, you make sure you don't live with ill feelings. Are you getting what I'm saying? So make sure the relationships are in place. Things are in order. There's, look, there's nothing that cannot be resolved. If you have that mentality, you don't live that kind of thing. I don't care. If you, have, you just keep up. Sometimes we even meet people even you cry your face one way. Some people enter church and do that. <laughs> How can you come to God's presence? How can you lift up your hand and worship God? When sometimes you're just destroying somebody else by gossip or criticism, evil criticism or another, and the next thing, you know, hallelujah, Woo, we worship. Which worship? Where are you worshiping? Who are you worshiping? It's not so. It's not supposed to be so. You know, when those days when they used to come into the temple and uh, you, have, you have to cleanse, you have to be, the sacrifice, the high priest will sacrifice for the people for himself and for the people for going to the Holy of Holies. Now, for what is trying, we're trying to do is that, is that we are not, we, don't, we leave some aspects and go into the Holy of Holies. You think we'll come back alive? No. Thank God for the blood of Jesus now. But we're not abusing liberty. Well, you know, if you're walking with the Holy Spirit, you know it. If I'm not walking well with somebody I just passed by, I can't be comfortable for me to just sit down and just, it's okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For a child of God, no. I mean, I said, you're not, you don't have to be best of friends. That's what I'm saying. But, you should be able to. You, you have to be able to. You have to be clear in your heart when you pass by somebody. And you, you're able, you, you should be able to say, ah, yes, I'm, you know, that you're okay when it's not doing well. Sometimes some say, well, what if you reach out to them and they don't want to reach out to you? It's okay. You're doing your part. That's why I say, bless those that persecute you or despitefully use you. Bless and curse not. So, so which means, why they are still despising? Keep blessing them, isn't it? So do your part. Praise God. Verse 9 of Romans chapter 12. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I prefer one another. So which means I, it becomes sacrificial. They could hurt me, but I choose them still. No matter what is happening to me, I prefer them to myself. Because when they are doing wrong to me, I want to protect myself and help myself. You don't have to do that. You, I don't do that because I'm trying to help me. It doesn't matter what happens to them, whether I hurt them, whether what I say does that to them. So, but I prefer them to myself. 
That's why in Luke 6, 30, when he says, give and shall be given unto you, the preceding verse talks about forgive. So when you forgive, you're giving. Hello? Forgive. You're giving. It's sacrificial. In 2 Corinthians, when Paul was talking about chapter 3, I think, when he was talking about we are not ignorant of the device of the enemy, he said, forgive. For whoever you forgive, I forgive. So we do not give place for the devil to take over. For, he says, for we are not ignorant. For every of such confusion and conflict is a satanic attempt. That's why I said the device is it's not direct. You might not know it then. There is no way confusion will be a thing of the Spirit of God. It will not be a thing of promotion. So when there are conflicts in church or anywhere, it's not of God. It is to reduce, to destroy, and to scatter. Is somebody hearing me? So if we have that, if we are not selfish, and you have that in your mind, you will protect that. You will make sure that you are not an avenue that, God, that the devil could use to do that. He said, for we are not ignorant. Of the devices. If I have a discord with you. God forbid we won't have it. I will fight you. <laughs> if, if I have a discord with you. It's not just you. Your wife is involved. Your lovely children are my friends. Coming to hug me every day they are involved. She's sitting and looking at every day. Maybe she's happy when you come and she's involved. Maybe the one who opens the door for you every day, who sees you, oh, they are here, they are involved. Are you getting what I'm trying to say now? So it does not just affect you, it affects a whole lot of other people. Relationships. Now, of this pool of everybody, are you telling me now there's not one person that God can use to relate to you or something, bless you or something? <laughs> That's life. That's what it is. So if we don't see, if we are myopic and just see only one way, this doesn't hurt me, keep it, I don't like what he did to me, 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 I, this is what I want, this is what it's supposed to be. We just don't, it, it blocks things. Something so we don't even know. I remember the story they said of a, a guy, the story, I think I've shared it sometimes. A guy was walking somewhere and the boss was mean, one lady, mean. He was the director of nursing in the hospital. Mean, and this guy was one of the managers there, so he left and went to another state. And he was promoted to a director. And there was an application, um, what do you say, employment opportunity. The one here lost her job, went to look for a job in that state. Lo and behold, is the person who, was fi who, who she ill-treated, who was the director. They told, she couldn't stay. The one begged her, please. I'm not, of course, it might be easier for us, maybe a guy, maybe it's not that emotional. I said, no, don't worry, we'll work different. He said, okay, okay. And she left. She didn't come back. Because she was now assuming that the person would treat her like she treated him. But it's not always like that. That's why sometimes people, people are not, they say, believe, believe all things, be all things, bears all things. We, 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 we treat people out of fear, of thinking that's the way we, 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 we respond, we, we anticipate something from people. So any little mistake somebody makes, it might be innocent. Maybe I'm supposed to take this way. I didn't take it. I take it on her. You know, I'm not going to. I might correct you. Say, come back today. But I'm not going to take it like this person deliberately did it. This is what they do all the time. This is this is You understand what I'm saying? So, so, but people based on what they went through in the past. That's why I'm still saying it. It could be abuse. It could be whatever that they went through in the past. They begin to project that into every relationship they come into. So there's no stable relationship. Whether it's marital, job. Business, anything. It's not there. Unless one of the, the other party is patient. <laughs> Most times, individuals like that, they use their own hands to destroy the good things that God puts in their life. They find themselves projected towards, they, they go towards like, you could see like, some of you, if you're watching my mother, this is a curse. So says, Can't you see? You're destroying something. But they don't see it. When you, because such things, revolve around themselves, alright? Now, so, 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 you see what? what? Glory to God. Now, where did I stop now? So, so now it says, prefer honor, it says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, in verse 12, patient in tribulation. Patient. Patient. Something happens. You know what? The beauty of patience, you will allow God to minister to you. 
when there's a response, wah, 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 fire for fire, as you want to do, someone will stop, no! You, the scattering will have done, and then, how can you scatter that you want to go and repair? When it's something you will have done proactively. And you can be like this and go on the job, where you can be speaking all the, let's be proactive. <laughs> but in, in the individual relationships, you're not there. And when people relate that to us, we can't take it, but we give it out. I, I hear what I'm saying? Every one of us, yeah. We give it out to people. You don't have to be a boss to subordinate. Anybody. You can give it out to people. You're not patient. Maybe you, you, you can even be, I'm not sure, opens the door for somebody and then and maybe your door wasn't open too quickly and uh, so you, 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 you're like, hmm. Don't know how they do in this church. <laughs> You're not patient. <laughs> You're not. So you can never know what God has in store for you. Your con- your connection with the Holy Spirit that day, your flow with somebody. As long as your patience can even release something from other people to say this person is unique. I'm not talking of you know. There's a pretentious patience. Oh God, help me. That's when it is not universal. When I mean verse, it's not reflected everywhere. You can be patient, you pretentious patience on the job because you want to be seen good. Because you know that's where your paycheck is coming from. Where can you, when we talk of patience, it's where you think you're not getting any reward. <laughs> in quotes, because there's reward in church, there's reward everywhere with God. But I mean, where you're not getting a, a physical, tangible, uh-huh, nobody's seeing you <laughs> by yourself. You know, have you had some time where you pick up an item in the store and you don't want it anymore and you want to drop it just anywhere and those who tell you, take it back to where you picked it from or take it to the counter so it's easy for them to drop. And you're like, hmm, I'm in a hurry. I get to go, I get to go, I get to go. You drop it anywhere and go. That's it. That's not patient. Are you getting me? Nobody's seeing you. There's no tangible reward there, but there's reward with God. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody who is working with God generally listens and says, yes, Lord. Turns back, puts it back, or takes it to, uh, and, uh, takes it to the counter. Or even see the staff, of, I'm so sorry, I'm in a hurry. Can you help me put this somewhere? So it's not what man sees to reward you. That's the way some people pray their Christianity. So when you get to some, for example, if I enter a church now, nobody's please. If they don't, if they don't like it, I get out. <laughs> There's another church next door or <laughs> something, you know, liberty. So I can behave anyhow. I can do anything. So so you walk in there, the usher tells you, sit down. Like, so why? I want here. <laughs> and you say, if he doesn't tell you, and you're like, your mind, they're preaching. I'm like, hmm, I leave you today. I'm not gonna come back again. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So so. Because there is no tangible reward at that time. But we're not talking of working with man. Everything, everywhere, everywhere talking about maintaining a healthy relationship is to maintain first a healthy relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's why it says, love does this, does this. Why? Whom are you obeying? Him. When there is a good vertical, the horizontal is okay. Most times we want to jump from us to the horizontal. That's the behavioral. <laughs> I know. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking of when the spiritual that influences the behavioral. You hear me? So, so, so you, you, you're in tune with God. Lining up with what He says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. First. And then thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, why is the self relevant? Because when I don't allow the past to tell me I'm not good enough, then because I'm good, no matter what comes to that person, I don't see the person addressing me because I, they think I'm not good. The Israelites said, we, we, were like, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. So when they came back, all the way they lashed out at those Caleb and Joshua was because they were not feeling good inside of the Sahwe. Kill them. We want to do this. We are too small. We can't get these people. But Caleb doesn't say, We're cool, man. It's no problem. Josh, J- David, the brother, said, You small fry. <laughs> You've been taking those few sheep and you're coming here. David knew who he was. 
So he didn't, the brother looking down on him did not make anything. So David didn't lash out at the brother. It wouldn't have been because the brother said. David would have lashed out based on how he perceived himself. You call me small? I am small. I will kill you. <laughs> but when I know that I'm not small. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He that began the good work in me will complete it. I am not small. No matter what anybody says. It's getting better and better. So David did not bother with a lab. First Samuel 17. David turns around. The same stance he had. That's how he spoke to Saul the king. The same God who dealt with the lion. And we're taking care of sheep. Lion and the bear. That same God will take care of this Goliath. Amen. The same way he talked with his wife. Who mocked him and said, You, how can you be dancing naked? He said, Hey, the same God who brought me out. When I was small. I will now, now dance with this God. Are you getting my point? David knew his connectivity with this is God. So there is no challenge that is coming from any quarter that is intended to attack his person that will reduce him. David knew his God. That's why in 1 Samuel 30, when they had issues, the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord his God first. And then every other thing is taken care of. Is somebody hearing me? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. I just wave your hand unto the Lord. <laughs> oh, wonderful Jesus. Uh, well, well, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I have not done part of the message, but let's go. <laughs> Is somebody catching something? I said, maintaining healthy. He said, some people are blocking their destinies with this. It's time for us to be stable in our relationships. Somebody hearing me? Be stable. Change does not make it better, so to speak. Like, you know, it's like somebody says, This person did something wrong. Maybe if I, if I had a better guy, it would have been better. No, let it be better me. Hmm? Then it will change everything else. So we don't hop from things. Praise God. The Lord has great plans for us. Amen. Hmm? Amen. It's not by accident you stepped in here today. Because what I'm declaring is not just teaching. We're taking care of certain spiritual foundations. Amen. That's the process of a curse that is causing somebody to lose what God has. Because some of this is what I say. Somebody has not even, did not even, or does not even know. Because the things that have been missed. Because it's not like you are in it and you miss it, you know. Don't even know because some things, because some of the connections, some of the decisions of today affect another. Look, no matter how horrible somebody is, they call it on the job. The Bible says, let me read this romance. You're, so, you're supposed to deal with, as much as possible, walk towards peace if you can. Somebody hearing me? We don't see that as Christians. There's nothing that is not resolvable. You know, I, 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 I tell people that I say, when you bring away to us, I say, let me ask you a question. Do you still want to work there? They say, yes. No, so we can't continue conflict. Mm-hmm. Are you going to do it? Are you going to be fighting every day you enter there? No. Or, or you wait for them to fire you? No. So which means you pray and believe God for a change. Mm-hmm. That's it. But when we don't think that way, we don't expect that way, how can it come? God is able to do a sin above all that we can think or ask. So something has to be in us. What are we expecting? Some of us be like, I don't know how we, there's a conflict with one colleague or one person on the job, subordinate or boss. Uh, so what, do you, what can happen? So when you get there the next day, they are all gone? No. <laughs> no. So it has to be resolved. It has to be resolved. The grace to resolve it has to be released. There are certain people who will not change. That grace might be just for you to know how to manage the people who might not change. Or there are certain things prevailing in their own lives that need to change before they change. I'm talking about, well, so when we talk about, so you have to have the goal that there can be healthy relationships, even in unhealthy conditions. So we can't be the ones that the devil is using to block us. God forbid. 
I said there are avenues all over the place. The Lord put them for say, look, I put that say any relationship could be the avenue God will use to bless us. There could we will be strangers, you meet them at the bus stops. Just some people become friends, unspoken friends. Every day, some people take like bus to the city. Every day they meet at the same time. At the same, they don't talk, but they see each other. <laughs> you will be surprised. They, they say when, I mean, not like the perfect example, but when 9-11 happened, some people knew some people who things are affected because they were not seeing them at the bus stop anymore. That's to show you how strong the bond and the relation that was there when they were not even related, so to speak. But they see each other every day. Some people can even vouch for you when they have not spoken to you. They see you every day. I see that person. It's always there consistent in the morning, taking his courteous and all that. You, do, you are not friends. <laughs> they can even vouch for you for certain business when they have not related to you. So what if you come in every morning you're like, who cares? You might not be talking to somebody. I don't see them. They go to a good friend. No. No. <laughs> you can never know who. <laughs> Praise God. This is for somebody here today, you know. Uh, verse 13 says, distributing to the necessity. No, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Every, in this way, means it doesn't have to be sentimental. Look, committing every second to God. Somebody steps on your feet. Just give it to God quickly before you react. You hear me? When I'm overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Help me to be able to connect with you when things don't look right. That's the grace. Once God is involved, when we can be God conscious, we don't lash out. What's the essence of repairing, repairing, repairing? Sometimes we destroy everything with our actions and everything. What's the essence? What's the, I mean, that's like that's cooperating with the enemy. That's not, yeah. You don't even, I, every time I pray to God, let my life not be a block to anybody. Scripture says, not be a stumbling block. Let my life not hurt anybody. Sometimes every step I take, let it never be misunderstood. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's because somehow you can pass by someone, you are in a rush, you forget, and you don't see, and you don't greet, and you go. You must say, but the person should understand now. Yeah. But if they're in a state where they don't understand, what happens? Will I have hurt them? I might not have done it deliberately. Is, are you hearing me, somebody? The Bible says, shy away from all appearance of evil. Let your heart be, you desire that everyone you come in contact with is blessed by your appearance or your presence or your words, your actions or your thoughts or whatever. There are things that you don't do deliberately. But even then too, let God just help us. Praise God. Amen. It's a distribution to the necessity of sins, given to hospitality. Bless them to the necessity of saints. You know, saints first. You know, some people rather bless everybody on the street before they bless somebody they know in the church. <laughs> That's not, it's a reversal. You're, you're Jerusalem first before you're... Someone hear me? You're Jerusalem first before you're uttermost part. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Especially those in the household of where? Faith comes first. Because the family. If you truly understand the nature of family, if you're protecting one another. I remember in those days in the early church when they were protecting each other. Some of you are reading that recurrent book. You heard some of you heard some of the things the torture they were going through in the early church. The book I talked about. Now, when you're protecting one another, you know, there's no way in the early church that maybe they are gathered there, somebody wants to come and hurt somebody, they'll just say, Okay, take him and kill him. They won't they'll try to help, isn't it? So when somebody is in need, at a counsel or physical need or whatever, when you are helping out, you are protecting them from the onslaught of the devil. The hospitality. So understand the purpose. It's not just about giving things or doing things. You're trying to stand, make sure you're there. That they have the, the, the book of Psalms says, he said, he said the rot of the, of the, um, the, 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 the devil will not fall on the lot of uh, a child of God so that the devil will not have control, so to speak, I'm paraphrasing, over them. So that's Psalm 5 or something. Somebody you can search you while I'm going and let me know. Psalm 5. Say we, we will not allow them to... So, my God, all the examples I've not given. Are you guys okay? Yes. <laughs> we're going to continue this. Uh, and we're going to have a guest next Sunday. So maybe the upper one after this. But praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. Now, I keep reading. It says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. 
Rejoice with them that do bless them which persecute you who do wrong. That's the thing. You might be viewed as weak or you don't know what you're doing. But bless them which persecute you. Maybe not treating you right or trying to deprive you of what is rightfully yours. Bless them, he said. We can't consist. You know, <laughs> you know there are people who can even be Christians who don't even know wrong is wrong anymore. The case the world to know. When you are doing, when you are keeping on forgiveness and you don't know, then you are not walking by the world. Say so you do so who choose strong meat. You are still drinking milk. So they are able to discern between what good and what evil. Or when you are stepping on people so you don't even know something is wrong, something is wrong somewhere. So we pray for people more. He said, bless them which persecute you, and bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Be not high-minded. Be not high. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense no, to no evil. No, to, sorry. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. That's what I'm trying to resolve it. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Do not overcome of evil. Do, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Is that in our Bible? Amen. Now in Romans 13, verse 1 to 4, say, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, I'm just reading this to let us know. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, for they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil, to the evil. Without them be not, not be afraid of the power, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is, a mini, is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Praise God. So, so this is not in terms of a, a title. So the minister is subject to God also. But, but again, when the minister comes in with things, to say this is the way things should be done. If you are doing right, of course you feel good. Like somebody I said who was in... He was in. He was in. Uh, he was coming into church. She would come deliver leaves like t- ten minutes from the five minutes from the church, and would drop the husband and children. Husband who would come in early, and everything. They were supposed to be leaders in the church, so we drop them, the husband, and we go back herself, and strolling when the service first started. Ten minutes from the church, not five, not even up to ten minutes. Then she would sit there, get uncomfortable because you know what? You know you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she was a worker who could turn the workers with it. And she was living just right there. She should be the one opening the door of the church. <laughs> then get uncomfortable. Now, she said, I don't feel comfortable being there. No, it's not the place that makes you uncomfortable. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. So, you are not comfortable because you are not doing right. That's what he's saying in that scripture. <laughs> you're, not, you're not comfortable. So, even if the minister comes and says, Hey, you should come early. You feel uncomfortable. Oh, he's telling me. You should come early. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you getting it? You should. You should. If you can. If you had an appointment, you truly know you had an appointment with God Almighty. If Jesus was open the door of that church and you're supposed to step in here at nine or eight or seven. If you can, unless distance makes you one. But if you can. And you step, and you, he, Jesus opens the door. Will you come in instead of nine and come in at eleven and say, "Hello, Jesus. Good morning. <laughs> so nice to see you today. <laughs> Will you be able to do that?" So catch that picture. That's what is happening. On Wednesday, I was sharing something about make what you believe tangible. Those of you who are now who are now here, get this thing to say, create that visibility. You can see it. Because real. The same way. Let what you do become that real. I'm coming to have an encounter with the Lord. I can see Him tangibly. Am I going to walk into the place I'm late and I'm happy? What am I doing? Religion or social Christianity? Hey, 
Is somebody catching me? <laughs> yeah. Do you believe he's here? Huh? Good. So how will you react, relate to him if you really know he's here? Do you believe when you walk by that Christian you don't like to greet or you don't want to look at that Jesus is there standing with you? I mean, if the person is on the right, Jesus is on the left. After snubbing the person, can you look at Jesus and smile? Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Because <laughs> it says, I will never leave you. Now what? Mm-hmm. We declare, greater is he than me, than he does not. Really? That greater one inside of you will snub the person. <laughs> Make it tangible that you understand what I'm talking about. It's not just feeling. They will make our own rules away from the Bible. And it sounds good. Probably we are Christians for a while. Or we know a lot of people. So it becomes social Christianity. That's not what I'm talking about. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind. He's the one that is relevant to us. Now, so I read that and I'll go to um, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. He said, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Are you hearing me? For Christ, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So he sacrifices himself for other people's benefit. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to mention some one or two instances that we'll go into the detail next time we continue. This is very important. Healthy relationships. Every great person, or most of the great people in the Bible, had encounters against them. From Abraham, to Joseph, Moses, David. We talked about David when the brother mocked him. 1 Samuel 17, 28. You with those few sheep. He could have gotten angry with the brother. You know that would have blocked his going to do what he was going to do. One tarnished relationship can affect every other thing coming. One. Abraham separated from Lot. I mean, if you remember. If he moaned and moaned and... Uh, he did so good for this Lord, took you. God told me to go out by myself and then I joined you to me and look at what you have done to me. <laughs> Abraham would have been so sucked in Lot, would not even have been conscious of the things that were around him. We have people who were disappointed. Joseph was disappointed by his brethren. They sold him out into slavery. I mean, if you remember that. Huh? You know the story of Joseph. Am I sure? You remember that? Oh, good. That when he got to Potiphar's house, Potiphar was a wife, disappointed him. One thing is to be accused, one thing is to be punished for what you did. It's even worse to be punished for what you didn't do. When you were doing everything even right, not that you were neutral. Sometimes you cannot be bad, not good. But you were good, doing well, excellent, helping the whole family. But he accused you wrongly. Oliver's wife disappointed Joseph. Now he, in prison, he helped the butler, the chief butler, and the chief baker. How many of you remember? These were, you know, what say chief baker, chief baller. These were high-ranking people in the king's palace. They were like his supermen, <laughs> people who had influence over the king, and they had a dream. And Joseph said, "The Lord will interpret the dream." He was still connected with God because he did not allow the things around him to affect him. He maintained. Relationships everywhere he went. Somebody says, but he had favor. We all have favor. How many of you know that? 
whatever you employed is because of the favor of God. I don't care how smart or intelligent or beautiful or whatever you had. Whatever you're doing is because of the favor of God. Whatever breaks is favor of God. We all have what? Favor. By grace are you saved. The favor of God. Now the favor is working on us. Why don't we allow that favor to continue? He could have blocked the favor every way. He didn't even fight Potiphar's wife. He just ran from there. When they accused him, there's no record of the fact that he was like, you guys did it. No, he went to prison. And while he was in prison, he still had favor. And he continued with the favor. So, because if he was beat, I would have said, who has time? You people? <laughs> Potiphar? King's ca- captain? All people are the same. Who has time for you? Die in your dream. Let the dream even kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just say, I won't interpret what. Mm. He will hide his skill. You know, we do that, Christians. You don't want to be able to interpret his mean. So you are selectively blessing. Whoosh, can't take it back. When whatever you had in the first place did not come from you, it comes from God. He said, The Lord will interpret. Yeah, it's the Lord that interprets through me, not me interpreting. When you recognize that, your money, your fame, your position, your class, your beauty, Whatever you have comes from God. Mm. Somebody say this is good. <laughs> so, 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 so he went because he couldn't have. He would have been bitter, but he interpreted their dreams. I want to interpret. I said, please remember me when you go. According to how he interpreted, the baker was hung. And uh, the and uh, the chief butler was restored. He forgot the he forgot uh, uh, Joseph. Until eventually the king had dreams. He said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." <laughs> Man might forget you, but God will never forget you. Amen. He will never forget our labor of love. Amen. There's recompense. God will never be a debtor to any man. Keep sowing. Keep serving. Amen. Keep honoring God. Amen. Keep loving. Amen. Don't stop. Amen. Even if it's not recognized. There's so many things that are not recognized. Sometimes it can hurt. But it's okay. Like I told you, the Lord told me one time. Lord Jesus, a few weeks ago, said, Sister, like, so like, oh, even if man doesn't appreciate you, he said, I healed Ten lepers. Only one came. He said, do you know that's one percent? Ten percent. Ten percent. Only two. Ten percent. Only one came back. Ten <laughs> percent. That's so low. <laughs> he said, on the cross, everybody was against me. I fed five thousand. Fed four thousand. Healed many people. In the whole community, say, everyone was healed. They all flocked to him. They received everything. He said, hey, who were those around? They were not even up to that 10% anymore. He said, that's the ratio, son. If they did it to me, they do it to you. No difference. Yeah. Praise God. If you understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those he fed, he sat with everything. Whoops. Except a few that were there, Joseph, Arimathea, Simeon, the mother, Mary Magdalene, Martha, uh, Lazarus, and a few other people who were close, like the apostles and uh, the disciples, and a few. Yeah, that's small compared to 5,000. Compared to all the thousands. Compared to people saying, hey, where with him? They even chose a robber. They believe the report of those that were against somebody they have encountered. So even those that know you closely can believe the lies of the devil. But God says, I believe in you still. He says, my love is unconditional. What I have said concerning you stands. No man can change it. It wasn't initiated by man. It cannot be stopped by man. Amen. Somebody hear me? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But again, I declare that God will continue to put people who will believe in you around you. Amen. Because it's a, it's a destroyer of destiny to have people close to you 
who don't agree with you. They might agree with lips, but inside they don't agree with you for what God has for you or for who you are. Because somehow, even if they seem to be around you, they can be watching where you are and based where you are, based or qualify you by where you are. You can't be in agreement with me when you think I'm not making progress. See, in faith says you are declaring with me. Like the guy who came, my friend, my pastor who came last and said, Say, I'm agreeing with you now for the number you will need for this and this and this. That's what it's supposed to be, not based on what he's seen. So, so if a loved one or friend or neighbor or somebody close to you don't see progress in you, they are not in agreement. I don't care how spiritual sound or they may know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In some like I'm looking at you like, you're not doing well. What am I believing? <laughs> There's nothing. I am speaking what I it's in my heart, and that's what I'm expecting. So I can be scattering whatever you be, what whatever the person believes. So they can be destroying destiny, because in their mind, these things are not going well. This is not the way it's supposed. This and this and this and this. And then it can be destroying the purpose of God. God will raise up people around you, and cut off every hypocritical, unbelieving partnership or flow or relationship in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. Because his law says, believes all things. Have to be in agreement. So anyone, anyone who is speaking against your destiny or that's what you're discussing with people, God will cut them off by fire. In the name of Jesus so they come to you, they smile as well. Everything's okay. Yeah. And inside, they're like, I don't even know how far they are going. You know, that's why some of you, you relate your problems with people to people who are not. So they, every time they say, he's always doing this. They are always doing this. You tell your children this you, to somebody, hey, I don't know why that is. Only that. I don't, will he ever change? The fact that they even cry with you does not mean they are in agreement with you. No? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the fact that they discuss the issue with you. Yeah. The fact that they discuss the issue with you does not mean they are in agreement. They have to be in agreement that even when you are there or they are not there. Or you can even call the folks that something is getting worse in their mind. In their heart they are saying, God, there is a change coming. Something must change. By the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's agreement. Because true agreement says it's not over. With God, all things are what? Possible. That's true agreement. It's not emotional sympathizing. It's emotional sympathizing with somebody. In this sympathy, you begin to say, hmm, this is getting too much. I don't know what, uh, will he ever change? Oh, will he? No, 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 no. We're talking about the one who knows by the counsel and the word of God that if God, he, he that began the good work in you will complete it. In the Kepa Shatapa, there is no failure in God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Mm. You know, they've been talking so many times. Somebody been via live stream now. Don't be afraid. Your destiny is still rich. You are a millionaire. I can speak to somebody right now. Whoever you are that is watching. No matter what's been lost on the path. God is restoring you. But when it comes, it's going to come with a big wave. But you just flow with the Holy Spirit. Whatever God is saying now. You will see the manifestation. The Lord told me to completely now really address people on, on the live stream. Really talking like this, like I'm saying. Because there's some things it's doing. But remember to share the testimony. Email us, call us, and all that when things happen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody on the right side of your groin and the stomach and the lower parts. Now, there's a pain that is there. God is healing you. Amen. By the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your healing right now. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every hypocritical relationship, we cut it off. Amen. Now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody visualize you. I mean hypocritical. You could have known. This relationship could have been there for years. If it's hypocritical, God wants to cut it off. So we cut it off. Amen. It's not emotional. I don't care whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is. So it's, not, so it's hurting your destiny. God is cutting it off now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Is somebody catching me? Hallelujah. Now, now so I, I've given you these examples, but 
Finally, well, I want to go, I want to mention one final example. Final example, so you see what I'm saying. Moses. Moses in Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. The people were, these are great people that you see, they, they, were, they were hurt by people they cared for. But it didn't stop them. So we're going to continue with this, all the other examples of what God did in some in the New Testament later. But Moses, we're close, we're so close now in two minutes. Somebody catching something that God is doing? Huh? Verse 11, it says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian, spy, smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. Remember the story? Moses was born, taken in from the water, then he went into, raised up by his own mom, went into uh, the palace, and, uh, and then uh, grew up as one of the uh, princes, the heir apparent. And in verse 12, and he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to, to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, verse 14, Who made thee a prince and a judge of us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. That's how Pharaoh heard. His own people that he helped betrayed him. Now, can you imagine God calling Moses to say, go and deliver the same people? <laughs> now, I'm telling to tell you, when you say hell relation, you don't keep those things in. Purpose is bigger than some of those petty things. He didn't look at me well. He didn't get at me well. He didn't do well. How come these are the certain rules and regulations that man keep? You should, this is the way you should bring things. It has to come this way. This way. No! Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, in verse 16, now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to, to water their flocks. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Reuben, Ruel, I mean their father, he said, How is it that you come so soon? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew in water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said to his daughters, And where is he? And why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Notice, relationship. If he was dis distra distraught, or disported, or disgruntled, because of how his brethren treated him, and it was in him, he wouldn't be able to help this disciple. Hmm. Please, I help my own people, they even disappear. but not of helping people who are even strangers. Forget it. Every man for himself now. <laughs> Praise God. You know, oh, I, you know, are you getting what I'm trying to say? He'll be living for himself. Protecting himself. Happy to keep things himself. Forgetting what God can do. But Moses was not like that. He helped his wife, And that became a connection to the father-in-law and everything. He was able to live there. He was trained under that place as a shepherd guy. He was able to, that's how he could lead his wife. He was able to live there. Come back to this guy who led the, like the greatest army in one flow, million flowing out. Can you imagine the crowd walking on the floor? Not, not like, yeah. <laughs> mm. It was someone that in law had to say, Come on, Moses, delegate to people. This is too much for you to handle. The guy was ready, was doing it. One man. This is not leading by just issuing authority. You know, like maybe it was in Pharaoh's palace. You just do from your palace, you don't even need to go out. Then so and so and so on, and they do it. This one, you are amongst the people. You see the ethnic thing. And he has to listen to God and listen to and flow with what is happening there. Get back to God and come back to do what God says. But he was sub notice. He did not allow his sin. In Exodus 3, when God called him, there was no mention of Moses refusing to go because he was betrayed by his people. It was never there. Never. Moses only made mention of, I cannot speak. He said, how can they believe me? Not because of what happened. Because of me, man. Even him coming from Pharaoh's side. How can they believe me when they have to know that you said, so it's through the signs, throw the rod on the floor, pick it up, Put your hand in your bosom and then bring it out. It's a ton leprous, put it back in it. You see, if they, they will believe, well, not the first, they'll believe the second one. So God told him what to do signs. But Moses was not disgruntled. He was used of God to bring out those who betrayed him. Hello? <laughs> deliver like the Lord Jesus Christ. Used of God to deliver those who betrayed him. 
They turned against him. But he still said, not my will. Let your will what? He could call legions of angels from the cross to swipe away everybody there. But he, he stayed to the end, even while it was those who, who he helped that were dealing everything wrong against him. Because the purpose was bigger than the prize. Somebody hear me? The reward. Who for the joy of what was set ahead of him? Hebrews chapter 12 tells us. He endured the cross. Despising the shame there. For the joy. The reward. Bigger than the sacrifice. So there's more to your encounter with individuals. No matter who they are. Healthy relationships. Try as much as life in us to live peaceably with all men. It's not fight everywhere. We'll go fight here, fight here, live here. Say, well, what's the testimony that surrounds us? Somebody hear me? Yes. If the stop person didn't do well, see, sometimes we are not perfect. If it goes wrong, just come and say, Lord, help me. You'll be surprised that God will place that same person across your pathway sometimes. Supernatural things will just go smooth. People have started with discord. They end up hugging each other and they become best of friends. But your heart has to be ready for resolution. I don't want to do this. There's, it can't be by the Spirit when you have a final decision all the time without the Holy Spirit. There's no definitely the Holy Spirit. Can't you see? Believe I don't even see that. They even say to people, I don't like that place. I will never step back to that place. I will never. He was. Come on, calm down. <laughs> You're not I mean, You're not God. Come on. And people, some of them even listen and it's okay. And they accept. Some believers even take it. And they are actually empowering the people without saying. You know sometimes when you, when you keep quiet and listen to something that is wrong, you are consenting. People have consented about their churches, about where they are, about other relationships, by not, even if they don't say a word. Because they themselves don't believe in the place to start with. No matter how much they say, yeah. So you are hurting the other people's destiny. You are pointing to the other people. Some of us even know, the, you can even know the backgrounds of people. Of who they are, of what their life is, does it change overnight? When it comes to us, we know the people are bad. But when it comes to life, because we just don't want to do what is right, then we just take it. You can empower people into wrong when you consent to anything contrary to Scripture. There is no way God says people can be wrong as long as people did wrong to them. <laughs> but that's why we that's how we empower people. <laughs> yeah. <We're, and> then, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. You can you can sit in a congregation and watch and say, hmm, I don't know where everybody is. This must be something, something, this, something. You don't, they don't say the play of the devil. Like the sister I said who said, you know, we've been praying on this island. Over twelve churches have closed when so we prayed them out. I said, You really have been working with the devil. <laughs> yeah. And without knowing. It, it sounds spiritual at that time, you know, like they were praying. No, it's not. It's not. It's not God. It's not God. Every at- so you say, so which means every attack against a believer is because the believer is wrong. No, it's the devil that is the author of bad. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to what? Destroy. So he came to heart. But we have to come to establish life. Jesus brought life. Relationships. Let's rise on our feet. They had to read that Moses story because most of us can it's easily missed. You know, you don't see it. some of those when we're reading all this past when I read, I say the Bible reading passage this time it says sort of this and this, it's relevant. You know, it just came came my story. I said, Yeah, look at his own people. <laughs> That's it. You went to help them. He was a person of authority. He didn't need to help them. He can leave them where they are. Well, leave them where they were. But he didn't leave them. He helped them and they turned around and betrayed him. But he was still the one used of God to bring the same people out. Some of those who betrayed him must have been in the group. <laughs> he brought out, yeah, maybe the guy who actually said that thing. <laughs> to God be the glory. Praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Majesty. We praise you, Majesty. We praise you, Majesty. We praise you, my Jesus. We're going to see a lot of things next time when we talk about the strivings with Isaac. All of them, how they maintained their stance despite what was coming around them and they got to their purpose. Things were there to say no. 
relationships. Father, help us. Just give you to say, help us to maintain, keep, start, keep, and maintain healthy relationships everywhere, everywhere. Whether it's in a store, somebody we encounter, on a line in the post office, we're in a queue somewhere at the, at the airport, in the aircraft, anywhere we go, anywhere we go, Lake Epovo Shede, brother. Anywhere we go. Praise you, mighty God. Praise you, mighty God. Praise you, mighty God. To God be the glory. We honor you, majesty. For you are good and your mercy and just forever. Praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. This grace is sufficient for us, you know. Because everything we do is by the grace of God. There's nothing we have to be conscious. May God help us to get back to the consciousness of His presence. Without Him, we can do nothing. But with Him, we can do all things. So we're asking for His grace. Thank you, mighty God, for your grace upon every one of us. Grace for grace. Grace to yield to you first. At all times we see you first before anything else. Your grace, mighty God. Thank you for your grace, mighty God. Your grace that is sufficient for everyone. Nothing is impossible. In Jesus' name. Those of us that are viewing life, 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 life and everyone that is here. And I said that you said that we're not just gonna, we're not just talking, we believe there's an anointing. When God gives me any message like this, prophet, there's an anointing. But you have to understand that this is what God wants for me. Be healthy relations everywhere I go. You hear me? So it does not matter how it was yesterday. It's what you want now. Somehow we can preach and say, let's go. He says, mm, what is he saying now? He doesn't want to say, huh? You know, if you do that, then one is not getting into what is not, we're not tapping into the resources that God is releasing for this time. So if you want that change, then take it. Now, I want to pray a prayer now. We'll pray this way. Because there are things, anything foundational, anything hereditary or inherited, that everyone finds the same pattern flow in the family line. We have to break it so it doesn't go from you onto children. <laughs> and any aura, again, a lot brother, that again, there's an aura that makes somebody walk in another, so you can't keep any healthy relationship. So everywhere you enter, people can get agitated. Are you get what I'm saying? For no, it's, a, it's an atmosphere. Yeah, it's an atmosphere. It's a spiritual thing. I remember, if you remember the Wednesday we were talking about an aura from no. That was on the was saying, and when the Holy Spirit picked that lady and threw her from one end of the place to the other on the Wednesday. So the same way, and with the with the testimony, that's the lady that prophetically God was brought, brought into this place. But but I'm saying, it's the same thing. You know, the Lord says now. So we're going to pray that first one. Anything linked. Lift up your right hand now. Say, in the name of Jesus. Now, when, when I finish, we'll make declaration that you begin to pray. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything. Anything. In my foundation. In my foundation. Anything I inherited. Anything I inherited. Any curse. Any curse. Any evil plan. Any evil plan. Or schedule. Or pattern. Or pattern. Operating in my life. That's walking against relationships. I root you out. I pull you down. I destroy you. And I throw you down. In the name of Jesus. Begin of faith. I break every connection with any inheritance. In the name of Moshka, in the name of Jesus. Put your right hand on your forehead right now. Everyone viewing my life and do the same thing. In the name of Jesus. Say any atmosphere, any aura, any presence that is around me, that is causing faulty relationships or placing agitation around me, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Be destroyed by the fire of God and be flushed away by the blood of Jesus. Begin to declare a cable sharp anima. Brondolomo Kori Alama. Brondolobo Steady Anamaka. 
Branda la baba baba kori ala baba mashande ma. Branda la baba kori ala baba basake. Rika baba shkere ma. Here in branda blood of cheese. Blood of cheese. Rika bo shamre ni makar. Rone makar. In the name of Jesus. Thank you mighty God for a release of your grace. Your grace upon every one of us. We speak peace. Thank you for your strength. Your favor. Sweet aura. The aroma of the presence of God. Over every one of us, everywhere we go. Thank you for supernatural favor. Everywhere we go, wherever our names are mentioned, wherever our, our issues are discussed, wherever anyone hears of us or sees us, let it bring pleasantness. 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 In the name of Jesus. We give you praise, mighty God, for insights into what you have prepared for us. We we'll see it. We we'll encounter it. Nothing will stop it. In Jesus' name. Amen.